Hey everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now in our last episode, making an EVA foam Mace of Azog Part 2, you saw us completely finish off this super cool build and you saw us seal it in plastic. Uh, where you also saw us mask off three sections of the handle because we needed raw foam. And you saw the finished product and we peeled the tape off and everything was sealed in plastic dip except these three spots were raw foam. Um, and now, in this episode, making an EVA foam, Mace of Azog Part 3, that means you know what time it is. It's time to have arts and crafts class when we paint this bad boy up. And what's so cool about this is the paint job is super easy, but we get three different really cool finishes. We get leather, we get petrified, distressed, old gray wood, and we get stone. Um, and they're all very similar. They're all three colors, a light, a medium, and a dark. And just by doing that, we get that look. We've got a nice leather handle coming. We've got a dark gray, light gray, medium gray, petrified wood, and we've got the stone head. So, uh, that's it. If you're ready to hit it, let's make something. Okay, we're gonna come in and we're gonna start painting our leather handle. Now it's kind of brown, but it leans toward kind of like the reddish side. So we're gonna come in with our Tuscan red right here. That's sort of the color that we want. We're gonna come right up to the edge where we didn't want to paint, or where we didn't want to seal, just like that. All right, there we go. We've got this slight reddish brown tone on there, which is gonna pick up some of the leather look. And now we're gonna let this dry. And then after this dries, we're gonna come in with some two different tones of brown and we're gonna hit it on there just to, to leather it up just a little bit. Okay, now what we're gonna do while that's drying is we're gonna come in and we're going to start putting down the layer for our wood. Now normally we would do a couple different tones of brown for the wood, but this wood and the images of this mace look like it's that kind of like gray, petrified kind of wood. So we're going to try either the medium gray or the wrought iron, because we're going to have to put a couple different tones of gray down. There's wrought iron, and there's medium gray. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to get a little bit on our brush like this. Oh, nice. That actually is maybe spot on right there. All right, there we go. So as you can tell, it's a, it's a dark gray. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna hit in there with some light gray to get some details. Pretty cool. All right, so now we're gonna come in. All right, there we go. We've got the dark gray on there. So we've, now we're gonna let these dry and then we're gonna come back in and start detailing them with color changes. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with our real brown. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do some slight tone changes in here. So we don't wanna go heavy. We're gonna get some on the brush. We're gonna get a lot of it off, get it pretty dry. Just being kind of organic, not making any sense. We're just breaking up the red we're getting some nice tone change in there. See that where it goes from the red to the brown, just subtly broke it up a little bit, just so as we see it through the twine, it's gonna to start to have that kind of leather feel. All right, nice, all right, we'll let that dry. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with our black. Let's come down. This is not a square edged brush, this is a pointy brush. We're gonna come in and we're going to literally just drag Kind of some wide strips and then we'll come in with some really thin strips like that. We've got the dark gray, then we've come in with some black thick lines and some thin lines. Now we're going to come down here to the handle and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come in and get some slightly darker stripes right down the middle and we're going to get some really thin just to give it a little bit of additional 
grain look to it. Now again, don't forget, this is going to be wrapped. Alright, then we'll come in with the brush a little bit drier and we'll darken up some spots. Alright, All right, now we're going to let that set up a little bit and then we're going to come in with a lighter tone of gray. Just for Alright, here we go. Now we're going to come in with our raw sienna and we're going to have to be really subtle with this. I mean subtle. So we're coming. And we're going to try to get a bunch of it off so it's pretty darn dry. Then we're going to come in and we're going to go through here. And we're just going to start hitting some areas just to get a slightly little bit of a lighter. Nice. Just another slightly lighter tone. We're going to just come into some spots. You can see it right in there. That's just the subtle change we need. We've got three tones in there now. We've got the red, the brown, and the raw sienna. Let's go back over all of our raw sienna areas and turn up the volume a little bit. There we go. All right, dig that. That's what we wanted. Three tones. All right, now we're going to do the same thing back on the handle. We're going to come in now with our medium gray, which is our... All right, here we go. We're going to do the same thing in here. We're going to come in. Lay down some light gray in some areas. Now we're breaking it up. It's not. All right, there we go. Slight tone change from dark to light. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and start doing this part. All right. All right, now we're going to come in with our medium gray and we're going to start coating this giant thing. All right. All right, that's it. We're gonna cover the whole thing with a coat of gray like that. And if you notice, we're not filling it in solid. We're putting a layer down, but it's kind of, you can kind of see through it in some spots and that's okay, because we want that broken up tone in there. We don't want it to be solid. We're gonna get it an overall gray. Then we're gonna go over the gray with dark patches and lighter patches because that's kind of the way you handle a stone look is with the three different colors. So there we go. That easy. We're going to just go around the whole thing and we're going to cover it in and we're going to... All right, there we go. See that? We got all those little inside edges there. Perfect. All right, now we're going to spin it around to this side and we're going to do the same thing right here. We're going to come in Not bad. The side of the brush is how we're going to get this, these pieces right here. All right. And we're going to come in here with the small brush and get use the side of it. Oh, beautiful. So we're going to let this dry and then after this dries we're going to come in with a slightly darker gray and we're going to start dappling the area around and uh, breaking it up sort of like we did with the doom hammer from world of warcraft very very similar and okay now we're going to come back in with our wrought iron our really dark gray and we're going to start to break up we're going to start to break up our gray here so just like that we're going to start darkening areas up using our wrought iron Nothing super hard or detailed. We're just moving along and we're, we're darkening certain areas in. That's what we're looking for, just like that. We're just gonna start to break it up with darker gray. And that's it, just keep going. Okay, now we're gonna get in these areas the same way as we painted with the side of our brush. We'll come. All right, we're almost done with 
our second tone. All right, there we go. That's what we wanted. We just wanted it dappled, uneven, no real pattern. We just wanted to take the original medium gray and darken up spots with the wrought iron. And then we're gonna come back in next after this dries with another tone. All right, now we're gonna come in with our steel gray, which is even lighter. Do the same thing. We're gonna dab around with the lighter gray just to start getting a little bit of tone change in here. All right, check that out. Now we're talking. All right, check that out. All right, now we're starting to look like stone. Holy cow, see that? When you start. All right, here it is with just the two tones of gray on it. And then you spin it around to the next one. Bam, look at that. Nice with the gray, light gray on the edge, some of this edge. And then we just start popping it around there to pull out some areas. Now it's starting to look like stone. Oh, ho, ho. sweet. And we're not even gonna go into the middle. Don't go in the middle, leave the middle darker. Just do the stone stuff out around the edge, all right? Wow, really cool. And that's it, just keep going, man. Woo. Okay, now what we're gonna do before we do our final painting stage is we're gonna begin attaching this twine around the handle. And we are going to lay a bead down. hold our twine here while it bonds. All right, there we go. We've started to wrap it around. Now we're going to, just like that. All right, that's it. Now we're just gonna keep going all the way around. We're gonna fill this section, and then we're gonna move up to this section. Okay, now what we're doing is we are going to just draw a bead of super glue on an angle all the way around the handle and we're going to stretch our line on it and hold it there like that while it bonds and we're just going to do that as we go across the handle. Now we're gonna wrap all the way around this section right here. All right, so what we did was after we got up to the top, we can't glue twine to twine. For some reason it won't stick with the super glue. So we left it attached to the foam and then stretched it real tight back across this twine and started heading back down the handle. And we re-glued it as we passed over the foam but then we got down to the end and we just wrapped it real tight without gluing it, stuck it down on this bottom end down here, and then started heading back up. So that's what we've got. Look at that. Nice. So that's why we didn't seal right here with Plasti Dip. We wanted to be able to attach our twine really solid to our foam. And then what little bits of it we had to stretch over other twine, we don't have to glue it because we've got it anchored in so many other spots. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to begin going up the handle. All right, now we're just going to start wrapping real tight around this area all the way up to the top. So we put our bead of super glue down. We're just going to wrap real tight. And if you noticed, we cut our twine off here and ended it. And then we started it with a slightly thicker twine because we want the twine on the handle and at the top a little thicker. So you're not really going to be able to tell because we're going to put a wash over this twine also. So it dirties it up and you're not going to really be able to tell where it changes. Cool. 
All right, now we snipped off our twine because we're coming to the end. We're going to come in to the very end. All right. Very cool. Wow. All right, that's why we did not hit plasti dip here, here, or here because we wanted to be able to anchor right to the foam. And crazy. And easy, crazy, easy is what it is. You can totally nail this. And also, just so you know, um, I bought two different kinds of cord to do this. I went to my local Joann's Fabrics and I bought some, some jute. That's J-U-T-E. That's a little bit lighter color. It's a little bit thinner. And then I got some hemp cord, which is a little bit thicker. It's a little bit darker. But I was really going for two different thicknesses, which I got here with the jute and the hemp cord. And then that's how it turned out, looking good. Now we don't want it to be this natural color. We want it to be kind of dingy and grayed up and stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, we're gonna put a little bit of black down, and we're gonna take a tiny little bit of water, and I mean a tiny bit. There we go. And we're gonna mix it all around. All right, now we're going to... All right, look at that. That's perfect. That is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. We just want to dab it off. That just dirtied it up a little bit. Look at that. That is it right there, man. That is it. Beautiful. Man, that is perfect. Look at the difference between the unstained and the stained. That's exactly what we wanted. All right. All right, look at that. Ooh, it's nasty and rustic. And a little bit grody. That's right. All right, now we're going to come in. We're going to get on our, on our twine and we're going to get it on our leather. All right, look at that. Man, that is stained up. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna hit some areas like where the twine crosses over each other, right here and right here. We're gonna give it a couple seconds to let it set up. Ooh, man, is that nice. All right. All right, there we go. We've got, we've dirtied up our cord. Nice. Wow, really cool, really cool. Okay, now we're gonna come in. We're gonna put down a bunch of brown. We're gonna put down some black. We're gonna put some water in there. All right, there we go. Man, that's some mud right there. Get it right in there. Throw a little more black in there. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in. All right, we're just Pushing it with our paper towel. All right, there we go. Very cruddy down in there, very cruddy. All right, there we go again. We're mudding it up right in the middle there. Now we're gonna come in. We're gonna get it right in here. We're just pushing it around with our paper towel. 
dab in some of it, smear in some of it, just generally making it cruddy. Just to stain it up a little bit darker in some spots. All right, there we go, dig that. There's the stone head, looking pretty jamming. We've got our three different colors of gray in there. We've got our dirtied up inside areas there where grime would collect. We've got our cool stained up cord there. That's our hemp cord, the thicker cord up at the top. We've got our three color gray for our petrified wood handle. We've got our cuts in there, our wood grain cuts with the X-Acto knife that we heated up with the heat gun and they separated. Came in here with the handle. Handle's looking great. We've got our jute cord, the thinner cord down here, all stained up with our wash. We use the same mud wash to stain up our leather handle. That thing's looking used and dirty. All right, man, that is sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. All right, there you go. So, with that last detail, painting it up, that brings our Azog's Mace build to a close. All right, there you go, that was it. You saw how totally easy this was. We did our three different looks. We did our leather paint, we did our petrified wood painting, and we did our stone painting. Three tones in each, light, medium, and dark, and it was super easy. And you saw how we used our three raw foam areas to, to attach our twine and wrap it across. Really easy. This thing was super easy. Gosh, I love this. Man, I can't stop spinning it. You can't put it down. And hey, for all of our LARPing brothers and sisters that are part of the Black Sheep Props family, take one of these bad boys to your next friendly gathering and show them who's boss. <laughs> all right. Love this thing, man. Love it. Okay, so that concludes making an EVA foam. Mace of Azog Part 3. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.